Hi everyone, my name is Ray. I'm a customer facing data scientist from DataRobot. Today I'm excited to show you a use case on how bank and financial institution can use automated machine learning to fight against financial crime. The session will start with a brief introduction of DataRobot. Then I will showcase the challenges and opportunities in the financial crime domain, followed by a use case to um, to showcase the AI-powered alert prioritization. Then I will jump into the platform to show you a few demonstration on the capability of data robot, followed by Q&A. Let's start the session with the introduction of data robot. The company was established in 2012 by two data scientists who anticipated that company will not be able to scale their practice of hand coding all predictive models that a company would need to remain competitive. Also, they knew the task of developing and deploying model itself is a right uh, option for automation. Thus, the robot was born. So far, we have about 1,000 employees globally. And on the, um, on the databases, we're building about 2.5 million model um, in our managed cloud. It's a platform, platform designed for all persona. The user of data robot is um, very diversified, including data scientist, data analyst, business analyst, um, DevOps, IT, also the business user and senior executives. So our ML Dev and ML Op products automate the end-to-end -end workflow from data cataloging, model building, development, and monitoring. Well, ensure each step in the process is transparent so that you can trust the output that you are going to make decision out of. Also, we offer flexible options for you to deploy the robot solution, either on the, the robot management cloud or on-premises, virtual private cloud, or other hybrid approach. When talking about banking, there are endless of use cases that we're working with our banking customers, including credit, AML, financial crime, and marketing. So today, our focus will be on the AML and financial crime. AML stands for anti-money laundering, for those who are not familiar with this terminology. So the popular use cases, including false poverty reduction, suspicious activity monitoring, anomaly detection, know your customer, and also the fraud detection and permission. Let's take a look of um, the definition of money laundering and why it's concerning to the financial system. So the definition of money laundering is the illegal process of conceal concealing the origins of money obtained illegally by passing it through a complex sequence of bank transfers or commercial transactions. The overall scheme of this process returns the clean money to the launderer in an obscure and indirect way. Below is a typical money laundering cycle. Start from a collection of dirty money. That's actually why this process is concerning to financial um, financial institution. The dirty money might come from a lot of um, different type of financial crime, uh, financial um, crime activity, including tax evasion, drug trafficking, and also terrorist financing. In order to flood the money into the financial um, system, the financial criminals will first place their money into the financial system, followed by a step called layering, which is moving the money around and makes it with legitimate money until the original source is obfuscated. In the end, the money has to be interpreted. The last step is called integration which is getting the now apparently legitimate money back, back to the, um, the financial system, including buying uh, luxury assets or financial investments. The current landscape of financial crime, according to the United Nations, the estimate amount of money laundered globally in one year is about 2 to 5% of the global GDP or 800 billion to 2, 2 billion, uh, 2 trillion in current US, US dollars. Most of bank and financial institutions are facing increasing regulatory scrutiny 
and also increasing financial crime compliance fines. The cost of the financial crime and compliance program is um, fairly significant. On the like on average, the bank cost the, the bank bank spends forty eight million dollars on the uh, on a yearly basis to com combat um, financial crime. But still, the process is manual and resource intensive, and not very productive, which generate a lot of false positive alerts. Actually, ninety five to ninety nine percent of those alerts are not productive alert, and also all those um, alerts require manual investigation. So there's a big challenge in the current financial crime and compliance framework. So how how does the bank um, how is the bank doing in order to fight against financial crime? Here is the um, process of a traditional framework of a transaction monitoring system, starting from data, including transactional data, customer data, and other um, information such as sanction screening list, public um, political exposed person, and other watch list. So the transaction monitoring system is where where is a system where those information get normalized. And processed, so alert will be generated and feed to the alert investigation process, where the operators will label those alert as true positive, yet and, and false positive. The true positives, which means that there is really financial crime and suspicious activity behind the scene, will have a suspicious activity report or SAR filed against those action activities. I'll use the abbreviation in the demonstration. There are a few challenges in this process. First is a rule-based system. So the rule has to be manually tuned, uh, which end up with large, a large volume of alert. Also, it only detects the known risk. So it cannot really cover the emergent money laundering pattern or any um, novel pattern that is coming up recently by the financial criminals. The alert investigation process is time consuming and labor intensive and end up with a large amount of false positives. Also, there is no data-driven or risk-driven um, process to triage the alert, and there is no prioritization process in the tra traditional framework. Here's an overview of what the robot think um, the opportunities for automated machine learning in the anti-money laundering and financial crime space. There are three major pillars. First one is the e efficiency enhancement. So we can utilize automated machine learning and AI solution to help the um, to help the um, banks and financial institution to prioritize their alert, leverage in text mining to find out any in in informative information from the um, investigation notes and narratives. Also, we can utilize in this to um, prioritize the risk factors in order to enhance the efficiency of the current transaction monitoring framework. On top of that, those functionalities such as anomaly detection, pattern detection, and risk indicator insights will help the bank um, improve the uh, effectiveness. So those will be the functions that can help them generate new alerts from the transaction and data they have. All of those enhancements has to be supported by AI-driven a solution. So in the robot, we ha have automation guardrail in order to make sure model is um, building model is scalable and the model are fully validated and justified. The compliant documentation capability enable the user to get a word document for the model for any model they build in the robot within a second. Also, the model monitoring management capability as part of the data robot ML ops offering enable the user to track their model in the production um, system. And then um, the insights from the system will tell the user when and how to change the model and retrain the model accordingly. For today's session, we're going to focus primarily on the alert prioritization and, um, and see how it can be used on top of the traditional transaction monitoring framework. Here's a solution design. Start from the data. You can gather the data from both the transaction monitoring system as well as the source data. It could be from the mainframe, from any uh, data warehouse, that those data can be normalized and consolidated by data robot. 
And we can learn the historical alert and see which alerts end up with the suspicious activity report. And then in order to figure out in the future, when you have a new alert coming into the system, we will prioritize them based on the risk we learned from the history. And the alert will have a label from very low, low risk, no risk, all the way to high and ultra high risk. And this SAR risk, represented by a probability of being a SAR from zero to 100%, can be used to inform the investigation team to take, take action on top of it. So for the alert with the extremely high score, they can be considered into a queue for auto escalation. And then for the ones with no risk, which means they have extremely low um, probability of being a SAR, then we can uh, hybrid them, hibernate them or triage them into a lighter investigation queue. For the things in the middle, we can use the score themselves to bucket them into high, medium, low risk for smart alert allocation. In the same process, the robot can leverage other techniques such as anomaly detection and insights to discover new alerts. All those can be registered into the DataRobot ML Ops offer and then feedback to the investigation process and inform the um, investigators using the insights coming from the AI solution. A few key benefits. First of all, significantly reduce the amount of false positive and um, without missing any historical SARS. It's a risk-based approach because we learn from the historical um, SAR filing process, and then all the process, uh, all the model built by data robot are trusted and explainable. We can use that as alert triage process. And also, again, we have seamless integration with um, any transaction monitoring system. So here's the life cycle of a machine learning solution for alert prioritization. Start from data preparation. Um, it requires both data robot technology as well as the domain knowledge because that's what we see working with different customers in um, different industries, especially banking. That domain knowledge is still a pretty key in the, a key driver for the success of the machine learning solution. Then data robot will leverage the computational power and automation to conduct model model training, train does dozens of model, and then find the best one with the best predict predictive power to, to know the likelihood of alert being a SAR. Then the model deployment and model monitoring will inform um, the lifecycle management of a model and making sure if you have data drift and um, accuracy decay over time, um, the user can retrain the model and redeploy the model in within a click. So I'm going to jump into the specific use case. It's coming from one of the AML detection scenario. It's about a credit card company's AML program. We call it merchant-based money laundering. The idea is the customer might spend on their card and overpay the credit card, um, and seek for a cash refund of for the difference. Or the customer receive credit from the merchant. Um, instead of using it for other transactions, they again request for a refund. So this will be the like the layering step in the um, in the money laundering uh, in the money laundering cycle, right? Where you can kind of um, trying to transfer the money back and forth in order to make the origin of the fund um, vague and obscure. In this case, we have a few data table, including customer transaction account and uh, alert information. We use the robot technology to normalize the data and consolidate them in doing data aggregation in order to have one table for the predictive modeling. In this case, star is our target. It's a binary um, target, yes or no. So this is the binary classification model. And the robot can also support regression, um, multi-class classification, out-of-time validation, as well as time series projects, depending on the need. Once the model is finished developing, you will see like dozens of different models ranking on the leaderboard. And um, we have a pretty um, automated way to learn the dynamic pattern between your input and output. And we will pick up the model that has the best accuracy, the, the, the most accuracy in predicting whether alert being, is going to be in SAR. 
And then uh, the result will be a likelihood from zero to 100%, right? And then the next question you have to ask yourself is, how do I select the binary cutoff points in order to triage the alert into a manual review queue or the lighter review process if the risk is extremely low? So there are three major objectives here when we are trying to figure out what's the optimal threshold for deployment in the model. First, we want to minimize the false negative rate or even change, uh, keep the false negative rate to zero because we don't want to really miss any historical suspicious activity report. The second consideration is we want to um, make the false positive reduction rate as much as possible because that's where the, um, the cost reduction will be introduced. And then we want the model to be consistent in both the seen data and unseen data, right? Because in the going on an ongoing basis, you have to use the model for the data in the future, and you want to make sure the model is consistent and it's performing equally well for the unseen data. So in this example, we leverage different techniques like confusion matrix, rig matrix, ROC curves, uh, to to select the optimal threshold. And also, we have a new technology called profit curve, where I figure out one threshold, which is 0 0.02, which gives me zero missing stars with 73% false positive reduction. And also the same effort, it's the same um, benefit we can observe from both seen data and unseen data. Um, I can show you that in the demonstration. Also we offer a large amount of uh, model explanation tool. So this is one just one glance of the prediction explanation capability we have. So when you have a alert that got a example 90.2 percent 90, 90 of chance being a SAR, what's the reason, right? And those prediction explanation in different using different algorithms will give you the reason behind the scene why the machine is thinking this alert has a higher risk than the others. Also, um, there are different insights come along the model building process. In this case, the robot provide a hotspot for the uh, alert we're analyzing. And um, the hotspot will, find, will help you define different customer cohorts, and each customer cohort will have a different, um, different risk level. In this case, this, the one with the, most, um, with the highest SAR rate, 83% of the SAR, you see the reason why this, customer, um, this group of customer has extremely high risk of being a SAR. And then you also find some the code spot where there's no risk at all um, because of the transactional behavior and their business attributes. So after you decide the best model for deployment, you deploy the model via the robot um, ML ops product. Then you want to tr continuously tracking the model um, accuracy and data drift over time. So because some of those features are um, important and they might be drifting over time because um, things like customer behavior is changing over time. For example, there is new product issued by the bank, so you have new transaction type. Um, so how those change will impact my model over time. So you can use the dashboard provided by the robot to track your model uh, in a production environment. At the time of model retraining and replacing, um, you can leverage in uh, the, the accuracy checking to to get the like early early um, early warning on if your model is decaying over time, or you can leverage the champion challenger approach to see if other models are performing better um, as time goes by. So once you decide to train, retrain, or replace a model, you can simply do it on the general by ML ops, and you can see the reason of the model replacement and the change log will be available to you. Um, so this is give a really governed way of model management and model replacement. So let me do a quick demonstration on the platform. I, I know we have about um, five to 10 minutes left. So I will, I will fast forward some of the steps and showcase um, the, the platform. So let's start with the data. As I mentioned in the previous slides, um, we're trying to build a model pr to predict if the alert is going to be a SAR or not. So we have this one as a target for this predictive model. 
As you can see, there are about 10% of those alert is actually a SAR, and the remaining 90% are false positives. Each row here indicate a alert. We have about 10,000 record in total here. And you see the information for each alert is has a large variety, including customer income, the state of a customer, so it's a categorical information, the transaction information, what's their average transaction size, and what's their total spend. And also we have the customer representative notes, right? So this is a tax information. Often is ignored by the data analyst or business analyst because it's hard to analyze by the traditional ways. And the robot can just analyze your tax information directly. We utilize a lot of tax mining and NLP capability to analyze the tax information and generate insights. So the data is right now in my AI catalog, which is um, data cataloging um, platform. You can use this to um, track all your data assets coming from different data um, resources and different data warehouse. Let me start a project from here. Just click the create project. I'm now registered the data to the um, main user face of data robot. Like most of the data science and data analysts will do, once you get a new data, the robot is going to do the exploratory data analysis to understand the distribution of your data, whether you have data quality issue, missing values, or um, outliers. All those will be available in the data quality assessment. You can also see a drill down and more detailed visualization for each column. And those are really interactive for you to understand how your data look like. For this project, SAR is our target. So I just simply select this as our target. And then it's ready for the autopilot. If you have other data set you want to join with this table, you can set up connection using the secondary data sets. Also for advanced users who want to fine tune the uh, model setup, for example, cross validation is a way to avoid overfitting and make sure model is generalized enough. Can, uh, which can be used for data in the future. We automatically set up five-fold cross-validation with 20% holdout to make sure a model is fully validated, but you can always change this based on your preference accordingly. After a click start, the robot is going to run a few steps here to um, analyze your data, partition your data, and then figure out what's the best, uh, what's the um, good option to, um, wh what kind of a modeling approach are good options for this data set. I will fast forward to a complete project where you can see the robot runs um, 36 different models and rank them on the leaderboard based on the evaluation criteria. We're using log loss as this project, but you can also use AUC, Gini norm, and other metrics to measure the performance. All the modeling steps are transparent, so you can see how the robot is, is um, doing data pre-processing, feature engineering, and also the algorithms. And the documentation are fully available by the user. Anytime you want to look in deeper into those algorithms and technical details, you can always click the uh, link on each of this building block on the, on the blueprint. Also, we provide data quality handling report as well as compliance documentation where you can just have one click and preview the Word document that the robot is creating for this, for, this document, for this model. All the copy and paste work will be automated here. You don't even need to do that. Everything will be ready in a few seconds. For evaluating this um, alert prioritization and false positive reduction power of this model, let's try to look at that threshold we pick up for this binary cutoff. So we use 0 0.02 as binary cutoff on the cross validation set, which is 80% of your data. We receive zero false negative and also significant, a significant amount of false positive reduction. So it's about 73%. Now let's hover here and change this to the holdout set, which is 20% of data that we're putting aside as if they are not seen by the model at all, right? Pretend they are the data coming from the future. By applying the same threshold, we can achieve the same amount of false positive reduction without losing any suspicious activity report. So this number over the 2000 is similar to the 73% of false positive reduction we saw in the cross-validation partition.
also, also there is other tools for you to understand out of all this input data, um, I have things like total merchant credit in the past 90 days, number of customer requests were refunded in the past 90 days. Those are the uh, features that is highly impactful to make a difference between SARG alert and not SARG alert. So you can use this one to risk prioritize your risk indicators and also can help you to kind of fine tune and refine what kind of um, features and risk uh, indicator you want to have in the uh, transaction monitoring scope. In order to understand how exactly that feature is Im impacting my, my um, alert risk and SAR risk, we can take a look into the feature effects where we can provide a partial dependence plot and for you to understand the marginal impact um, of the, each specific feature and their alert risk accordingly. In this case, when total merchant credit in the past 90 days is below 1,000, the SAR risk is really low. And when that number, when this feature is above 1,000, the SAR rate, rate is um, growing exponentially. In order to deploy the model, the robot offers different options to deploy the model in the method you want to choose. Um, if you want to use the robot ML ops um, product, you can register the model into ML ops. So um, the robot is going to create a RESTful API endpoints where um, you can leverage all the data drift tracking, health, uh, service health tracking, as well as accuracy over time to see how the model is performing um, in the, after you deploy to the production environment. As I mentioned, there are different visualization you can use to inform um, the user on how the model is performing over time, service health, data drift. And also we have a new functionality called champion challenger model. In this case, I select this random forest as my champion model. And we have two other models running in parallel as challengers. You can track the performance over time for all the champion and challenger models. And then if you notice that the challenger model is actually outperforming the champion, you can simply click here and swap it using the challenger model to replace the champion model. And all the model replacement process is fully, um, govern, fully doc, will be fully documented in a governed way. So you can choose the reason why you want to replace the model. And also, once I click that replacement, the change log will be changed accordingly. So this concludes the session. Hopefully, it is helpful for you to understand how bank and financial institution can utilize data robot and the machine automated machine learning platform to um, fight against financial crime and uh, money laundering. Before I jump, uh, before I wrap up the session, there are a lot of good contents that the robot team is creating for you to understand uh, from both technical and business point of view. We have the robot community where there are a lot of good contents um, and very is a very interactive community. You can ask questions there for data robot technology, machine learning in general, as well as use case related questions. Also, I'm available. Um, you can contact me after this session for any question you have for this topic. And as I mentioned, I have a blog post for the um, AML and uh, uh, false positive reduction in the Deroba Pathfinder, you can go to this website and find the um, webinar, uh, find the um, the article I wrote for this topic specifically. There are a lot of technical and business details in, in more depth. Thanks everyone for joining the session. Hope you have a great day.